What's going on, Quest Teens? Welcome to our final leadership series or lesson from our leadership series that we've been making it through in the month of October titled Most Likely To. And I know we're in November, but we're going to end October with a bang and start November with a bang. And I want to title this lesson, Great Leaders Follow God's Lead. Great Leaders Follow God's Lead. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a new situation and needed someone to show you around? Think about it. New school, new job, new home, so on and so forth. If you think, you know, we've all been in situations where we've been new somewhere, we didn't know our way around. It could be a little bit intimidating, could be a little bit scary. But you notice that usually in a, in a perfect cir circumstance or situation, there was a leader, a teacher, maybe an older student at a new school that actually took you by the hand, maybe not literally, but they showed you around. They showed you where the classrooms are, where the gym is, where the pool is. If your school had a pool, that would be awesome. But they, somebody took the lead to show you around. And eventually after some time, after you were at that school for a couple months or at that job for a couple weeks, so on and so forth, you learn your way around. Then you're the leader. Then you're the expert. With that being said is you have to learn how to follow before you can lead in mostly any situation in life. You know, before you're a boss, a CEO of a company, before you're voted most likely to succeed, before you're, you're the head of your class or so on and so forth, you have to have learned how to follow someone's lead. You have to have learned from someone that did it before you and then maybe took you under your wing and showed you how to do some things. Some people say leaders are born. That could be true, that somebody could have that God-given ability to lead from the womb. But for the most part, that person has to spend some time under someone else that knew how to do it before them. And I'm here to tell you that there's no better person to follow in this world than Jesus Christ. There was no better example than following his lead, God in the flesh when he walked on earth. And I'm going to get into scripture, and it's a specific letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Thessalonica. And... Paul set a great example for this specific church. He spent some time there, him and another leader by the name of Silas. Paul and Silas spent a couple months at the church in Thessalonica. And what they were doing was that they were discipling this church, ministering to them, teaching them what it was like to follow Jesus Christ, especially in a time of severe persecution and severe suffering. And after some time, Paul had to leave that region and go minister somewhere else. What he would do is he would send these letters to these churches just to check their temperature, check in on them, and also sometimes rebuke them on what they were doing wrong, and at the same time also motivating them in what they were doing right. So let's see what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. I'm going to go uh, two verses at a time and then comment afterwards. The subtitle says, Thanksgiving for the Thessalonians' faith. Verse 2 says, We always thank God for all of you, and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. So the letter starts off amazing. Paul's like, listen, you guys are doing really good. You're persevering in the ways of the Lord, just like I taught you. And I hear that from, from where I'm at right now. So it's a good thing. It starts in a motivational way. So Paul's doing it. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great thing so far. Now we move to verse 4. It says this, For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that He has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and deep conviction. Now here's a key point, and I want to highlight this. You know how we lived among you for your sake. This is important. Because Paul and Silas, as they spent time there, was Paul is telling his churches, listen, the time that we spent with you, we were examples we taught you and showed you what it was like to follow Jesus. We were living examples. Judge us by how we were around you. So Paul is saying, you know how we were, how we taught you the ways of Christ, how we taught you how to stand firm in the midst of perseverance and suffering. And verse 6 says this. If we go to verse 6, this is also, uh, again, I want to highlight this first scripture in verse 6. It says, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. That's an incredible point right there because Paul, if he had a sermon 
And I'm just like, if I could, you make it through the letter, if he had a sermon that he preached to the church in Thessalonica, I think it would be titled, Follow Me as I Follow Christ. Because that's exactly what he did. Paul literally showed the ways of Christ, taught the ways of Christ, and afterwards said, you know what? Follow me. Follow me because I'm following Christ. And as you follow me, you're going to follow Christ. Before you guys become, become leaders in your own way, you have to learn what it's like to follow. So Paul's like, listen, I'm a leader. God called me. I've been doing this for a while. I'm following the ways of our Lord. I'm suffering for the ways of our Lord. I'm marching on forward to different churches in different regions. I'm preaching the good news of the gospel of Christ. He says, I'm bringing that to you. You guys know how I lived around you. Become imitators of me. Imitate me because I'm imitating him. If we're being honest with ourselves, everybody imitates someone. Think about the fashion and the styles that you wear, how you dress, hairstyles, the sneakers you decide to put on. At the end of the day, that was inspired by someone or something. Nowadays, there's, there's what you call social media influencers, right? There's so many of them. And what they do is they dress a certain way to be able to influence you to buy that product or to wear that thing. There's so many of them. And I'm here to tell you that there's no better influence than Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying, look, Paul was an old school influencer. He would influence other people to follow Jesus by the way he lived, the way he spoke, what he said in his actions. And the time that he spent there, he had a good reputation. He said, judge me and Silas by what we did. You guys saw how we were amongst you. We taught you the ways of the Lord and we told you, follow me because we're following him. And you're going to follow him because we led you the right way. The second half of verse 6 says, For you welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. Whole different level of suffering. I mean, nowadays, look, you could profess Jesus and we're blessed that at the end of the day, people might make fun of you. You might get some level of persecution, but it was a whole different level back in the day. You were to profess Jesus, your life was literally on the line. Verse 7 says, And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. This is important because Paul's saying, you guys imitated me as I imitated Christ. And because of that, you became a role model. You became somebody that now can be imitated. And you started having an impact of those non-believers in those towns around you. So I'm here to tell you this. Young people, as we imitate Jesus, as we imitate the writings of Paul and how he called us to live and how the Lord calls us to live in Scripture, I'm here to tell you that you're going to impact anything and everyone around you. You can become an influencer. You can become pe someone that people imitate, not for your glory or because your incredible ability and power, but for his glory and who you decide to imitate. Who are you imitating? Who do you strive to be like? Who are those posters on your wall? If you turn around and see, the, if you're watching this in your room, who are those people you look up to every day? Who are those people that you want to be like, act like, dress like. Paul was like, listen, I act like, dress like, walk like Jesus. And if you do that, you're going to follow him. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Verse 8 says, the Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. These people started impacting everyone around them. Why? Because they took Paul's words seriously, they repented, they gave their heart to the Lord, and they followed God's lead. They became leaders because they followed God lead, God's lead. Because the first, uh, a leader first have to learn how to follow. Think about it, like, if you're a boss of a company, if you're in charge of something, a group, in school, so on and so forth, you would love nothing more than to pe for people to be obedient to what you say. I love that as a leader. I would love... People under me or, or servants that are serving, uh, people that are serving the ministry or, or a leadership group or, or whatever it may be, I would love for when I say something that I want something to get done for the good of the situation of the company or whatever, the ministry, whatever it may be, I would love for it to get done right away. I would love for people to be obedient to that. But for me to expect that, I have to be obedient So when somebody calls me to do something. I had to learn how to be a faithful follower before I can be a great leader. Verse 9 says, For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell you, they tell 
how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And their reputation is ringing out. Everybody's talking about them. They're impacting everything and everyone around them. They're leading so many people to Jesus Christ because they were followers first. Now they graduated to be a leader. You want to be a leader? Raise your hand right there if you want to be a leader. It's a great thing. It's a great task to be an influencer, to influence people. I'm here to tell you that it's one thing influencing people to buy a product, to buy a cell phone, to buy a pair of Yeezys, to buy a, a, a New York Yankee fitted, to buy a jacket, whatever it may be. It's one thing to influence people to buy a product. It's a whole different thing to influence people to live for Jesus Christ. You're influencing somebody and you're sowing that eternal seed. That's a whole different level. And I'm telling you, it has way more reward. And God is calling us, you, young people right now, to be leaders. But I'm here to tell you that before you're a great leader, you got to become a great follower. The people in the church in Thessalonica made a difference in those around them, causing people in neighboring cities to follow Jesus as well. It started like that faith of a mustard tea that we spoke about a, a few months ago. And it started growing and growing and growing to eventually turn into a tree that bore fruit. And everybody feeds on that fruit now. All it took is one person to be like, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow. And then eventually I'll do that through following and being faithful to God's commands. He's going to build me up and set me up to be a leader. Paul imitated Christ. The church in Thessalonica imitated Paul. Look at, look at that. Look how this works here. The neighboring cities imitated the church in Thessalonica. It's just this, this groundwork, this tree of being faithful, of learning how to be a follower, and then eventually you become a leader. So ultimately, the neighboring cities imitated Christ because it all began with his example. If I can stand here and say, follow me as I follow Christ, I got to make sure I'm following Christ. And as you follow me, you're going to be following him because that's who I'm focused on. So here's a question, and I'm going to end with this question question right here before I, I end with a prayer. If someone asks you, what does it look like to follow Jesus? Do you feel comfortable saying, just follow me and find out? That's a difficult question to answer. Somebody that doesn't know anything about God, nothing about Christ, and they turn to you and say, listen, what's it like to follow this Jesus that you profess? And you can look him in the eyes and say, that's easy. Follow me and find out because I imitate him. And if you imitate me, then you're going to be imitating him. You feel comfortable saying that? You feel comfortable saying you want to know what it's like to be a believer? Just follow me. Look at me. Model me because I model him. If we're not comfortable saying that, maybe we should look in the mirror and ask ourselves why. How are we living or not living? Are we being imitators of Christ? Do we have the audacity to say, yeah, follow me as I follow him? Or are we just going to point him to the leader? No, go, go see Hector. Go see the team director. Go see EJ. Go see the pastors. They'll show you what it's like to follow Christ. I'm here to tell you that you have enough in you. If you have Christ in you and you live to follow him, then you can have the audacity to say, follow me because I follow him. Why? Because great leaders follow God's lead. Let me pray with you as you get your week going forward. And God is going to build you up to be an incredible leader that I know you have in you. I know you have leadership skills in you. And all you got to do is follow his lead. He'll take care of the rest. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity you've given us to just get into your word. Your word never returns empty, Lord. Thank you for this incredible leadership month that you've taught us. Thank you for what you're doing in these young people, Lord, building them up into this change agents and future generational leaders that are going to have an incredible impact, not for our glory or our skills or our talents or their talents, but because we just want to mimic you, Lord. We want to be intimidators, imitators of you. Let us follow your lead because your lead is perfect and your ways are perfect. Help us in our weakness because when we're weak, Lord, you're strong in us. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.